nice to see you all here in, uh, this morning. Considering outside is very wet and very miserable, but you are all very, very welcome. Uh, I was due to welcome the team on mission here this morning. They won't be here in person, but they will be here on, on the screen on video. It was just a last minute uh, decision that they couldn't make it to uh, restrictions. Uh, so they'll be on the screen uh, for, the, for the service this morning. We also welcome our Michael, our youth leader, who will be bringing the children's uh, story and prayer. So Michael, you're welcome too. Uh, the prayer meeting this e on Monday evening at 7.30, it does resume. Uh, that's at 7.30. And a big thank you to everyone who supported the BCM with a toy appeal. There was a great, uh, a great lot of presence there, so it's very, very appreciated of everybody. And the, just a reminder of the WDR, Gift for Life. If you still are able to donate to that great uh, organization, you can still do that. Uh, and the Women's Centre in Valley Bean, they would help a lot of uh, uh, single parent families in the area at Christmas time with toys and, and et cetera, et cetera. But the organization that usually helped them let them down at the last minute. So they put a bit of an appeal out so just to let you know that the church, uh, Paul took a uh, donation gift up to Ballybean Women's Centre to help them buy toys and stuff for the people in our, in our estate and around the Dundonald area. So just to let you know of that. Uh, up and coming services, uh, Sunday the 20th next week is our Kids Zone service. And next Sunday evening is our Carl service. Is it 7, Paul? 7.30? What is Seven. Well, <laughs> next Sunday, and anyway, the Carl service at seven o'clock. But you really do need to phone Davy Miller to book your seat for that that night. So make sure you phone Davy and just reserve a seat for yourself uh, this morning. Yep. And uh, David would have the roughly the same names down every week for Sunday morning service. If you're not coming, David has asked you if you just give him a wee text or a phone. Mm -hmm. Just to let them know that you're not here, so we can probably get somebody else into that service in the morning. Uh, Christmas morning service is at 9 a.m. And then Sunday, the 27th, back there, normal service, and that's with uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Bruce that morning. The Carl service and the Christmas morning service, the retiring collection will be for the Methodist Child Care Society on them two uh, services. And uh, just a note from Davy and ourselves, at the end of the service, if everybody could just please stay seated until David and Vera ask you to leave the church. It's just, we're just a bit weary of people gathering together. So if you just stay seated, David will come and ask you to leave nicely, so to speak. So. Yeah, don't take any offence of it. And uh, just a couple of birthdays during the week. Uh, I think Anne Davies had a birthday on Friday. And we know what Anne is going through over the last lot of months. And I know we all wished her happy birthday on, on WhatsApp, but we, just in case anybody didn't know, it was Anne's birthday on Friday. And then we've a wee young thing in the church this morning, Dorothy. Just a wee, wee young thing had a birthday as well. But she had a birthday yesterday and Saturday, so Dorothy... From us all, happy birthday. And that's all the amazing. Hey guys. hey guys, we're Tom32. We're really sorry that we can't be with you today in Dundonald. I'm Adam, I'm 19. I'm, I'm an American Canadian who's been living in Sligo for six years. Um, an interesting fact about me is I'm one of nine siblings. And my favorite part of Christmas is the peacefulness of it. Uh, my name's Lauren, I'm 19 and I'm from Belfast. An interesting fact about me is I have a one-of-a-kind guitar that my uncle made and my favourite part of Christmas is definitely the food. Hi, I'm Rebecca, I'm 18 and I'm also from Belfast. Um, an interesting fact about me is that I've actually lived in five houses in my life despite being only 18. Um, my favourite part of Christmas is definitely getting to spend time with my family. Hope you enjoy the service. Bye. So we look forward to hearing more from them later in our service. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity once again to come together, to gather in your house, 
to share fellowship with one another, to see and greet friends. But most importantly, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. We thank you for this season of Advent, for the hope, the joy, the peace and the love that it brings into this world. May you fill us with your love, your peace, with your hope and joy for all the world. May we worship you in spirit and in truth, for we ask this in Jesus' loving name. Amen. It's great to have Margaret back playing with us uh, again this morning. And so uh, as we will do, as we do every week, we will uh, try and sing gently and quietly. Uh, we've been, uh, been asked to reinforce that. Uh, we're not to belt it out. So of course I decide to pick a nice rousing hymn uh, to, to really test you all this morning. Uh, so we'll stand and sing together. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Please. 
God in prayer once again, coming to give thanks to God for uh, all that he has given to us, for his love and for his provisions. Let us pray. Gracious God, in gratitude for all that you have given us, we bring our tithes, offerings, and labor to help feed a world hungry for healing and hope. We give to you all that we are and have for the benefit of your church and your world, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to hand over to the team on mission and first of all to Adam and then Lauren. This has been a pretty dark year with everything going on, so people have been putting up lights and decorations much earlier than usual. Possibly because they have nothing better to do in isolation, but also probably because these decorations bring joy and light in this dark time. We all appreciate some form of, sorry, we all appreciate some form of decorations. Maybe they don't need to be flashy, Sometimes it's a simple nativity scene that's been passed down through the family. Maybe it's a special ornament or an old advent calendar. All these traditions that connect us to each other. Decorations are a way of preparing our homes and our lives for Christmas, which is when we remember that Jesus came to earth. In the same way, we should prepare our hearts for when Jesus comes again. If we can put in the care and effort to make our houses beautiful, why then would we not make take more care in making our hearts and souls beautiful. These decorations are for the eyes of other people, but God can see inside of us. So with the same joy that we have when putting up a tree, build up goodness and reverence and love inside yourself to share with the world. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And Philippians chapter 2 says that if we act in this way, in goodness and humility, without complaining or arguing with each other, then we will become blameless and pure children of God in the midst of all the awfulness in society. And compared to everyone else, we will shine like stars in the universe. Why would we pass up a chance to be like that? To be not just the ornaments, but the lights on the tree. And just like the lights lead around to the star on the top, we would be directing others to Jesus. And Jesus said in John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Christmas is that time of year where we get to eat lots of really good and yummy food. And it's most likely food that you wouldn't get at any other point in the year. I wonder, do you have a favourite Christmas food? This could be turkey and ham, or Christmas pudding, or pigs and blankets, or if, if you're wanting them, Brussels sprouts, but that personally wouldn't be mine. 
My favourite Christmas food is probably the Christmas ham. Here at Rebecca. Yeah? What's your favourite Christmas food? Um, my favourite Christmas food, I love all of it, but I'd probably have to say pigs and blankets is one of the highlights. Good choice. Yeah. Good choice. Good choice. So, I'm sure you and your families have traditional foods that you'll eat every year at Christmas. In my family, my mum makes a really good chocolate and pear cake, which is delicious. And another important part of Christmas food is the Christmas coma that you go into and take a nap after you've eaten all the food. Although, yes, we may have all of this incredible food, but sometimes we may become ungrateful for it. As we're preparing and getting ready for Christmas and all the food that we need to remember, we need to remember how lucky we are because there are many people around the world and even in our own cities who may not be able to afford all of the really nice food that we can. God sent Jesus into this world at Christmas and while he was here, Jesus helped and cared for everyone and anyone. One well-known time when Jesus cared and helped his people was when he fed the 5,000 people who were listening to him that day in Galilee. Instead of doing what the disciples suggested and telling the people to go away, Jesus told the disciples, they do not need to go away, you give them something to eat. Jesus wanted to make sure that everyone got fed because he cared for them all. Like Jesus, we should care for the people around us. And I'm not saying you or your parents should cook food for 5,000 people because that would be a wee bit much. But one way we can do this is through donating food that we get to food banks. So when you're doing your Christmas shopping with your parents, you could possibly pick up a few extra bits and pieces and donate them to the food banks that could be in your churches or your local Tesco. Another way that we can help people with food is by donating to charities like Christian Aid. The Christian Aid get money and help people in places like Nigeria to have a good income to be able to feed their families, especially at a time like this with COVID. These are just two ways that we can care for other people like Jesus did. So while you're preparing to eat all your yummy food, I want you guys to remember that we are really lucky to be able to have it all. And I want you guys to try your best and donate to food banks or even donate to Christian Aid. We're going to turn our attention now to pray and to pray for others. And today we're going to use the characters from the first Christmas to help us uh, to pray for others. Uh, on the screen will appear some of the different characters. I'm going to uh, offer some suggestions uh, for things that you can pray for. And then we're going to take a moment or two just silently in our own hearts uh, to pray for the particular things. So the first character from the nativity that we're going to think about is Mary. And as we think of Mary, we're going to give thanks to God for our parents and for the people around us who look after us, for our doctors and our nurses, for our teachers in school, for all those who care for us at times of need. Amen. We move on to Joseph, Mary's husband. Joseph had a difficult decision to make when he found out that his fiance was carrying a child. And so we pray for those people who have difficult decisions to make. These may be decisions about where to live, about what jobs they may do. It may be business leaders worrying about the lives of their employees. As Brexit draws closer, we pray for those in the UK government and in the European Union as they try 
to make difficult decisions about future relationships. We move on to the next characters, the animals who were in the stable. And we thank God for all the animals in our world and for the beauty of the world in which we live. Our next characters are the shepherds, the very first people who were told about the birth of Jesus. We thank God for the people who tell us about Jesus. We pray for our Sunday school teachers and Bible class leaders. for all those in positions of leadership and who minister and pastor congregations in this estate and in the wider Dundonald area. And we ask God to help us as we seek to tell other people who we know about Jesus. That first Christmas, a star shone brightly in the sky to guide the wise men to the right location for where Jesus was born. Father God, show us the right way we should go. When we get confused or we have decisions to make, show us the right way to go. As we think about the wise men who came from afar searching for the newborn king, Father God, help all people who are searching to find what they are looking for. Help people who are in need to find you. And may all of us know your peace and the joy which the wise men discovered as they knelt before you. Finally, and most importantly, we think of Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to be with us and to help us. And so we pray for ourselves, for the needs in our lives at this time. And as Lauren reminded us, we think of those in our communities and around the world who are in need this Christmas. We thank you for the food banks. We thank you for organizations like Christian Aid, World Development and Relief, and the Methodist Child Care Society, and many others who seek to bring 
need and help to those, or to bring help to those in need. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into our world. And we offer you these, our prayers, as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we hear from Rebecca, we're going to listen to a piece of music that the team recorded for us called Joy to the World. Chapter 3, verses 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Another thing we do to get ready at Christmas is buy and receive gifts. 
I'm sure lots of you have already started to make your list for Santa and many of us have started to buy gifts for friends and family. Adam, come here. What is the best gift that you have ever received? Probably my digital art tablet. Mm, that's pretty cool, thank you. So Christmas is a time for giving and as we get ready during Advent by making our lists and doing our shopping, it's good to remember that there are different kinds of gifts that we can give and receive. This Christmas, maybe more than any other, let's remember that there are people who would just love and appreciate the gift of friendship, people who would appreciate a phone call or a Zoom chat or a socially distant visit far more than something out of Amazon or Argos. This Christmas, maybe more than any other, if we are fortunate enough to have more money than we really need, let's be generous and share some of what we have by donating to a toy appeal. Advent is a time of getting ready by planning, buying and giving gifts. gifts. And it's a time of getting ready to celebrate and give the giving of the greatest gift that the world has ever seen. As I said, as I read the verses at the start and they say, through Jesus, God offers us so many amazing gifts, the forgiveness for our sins, the gift of strength and power from God's Holy Spirit, the gift of comfort and friendship for when we're feeling isolated or alone, the gifts of love and joy and peace and hope. This really good news is that we don't even have to wait until Christmas day to receive that this great gift. We can receive it today and every day as we open up our hearts and lives to receive Jesus, the best gift of all. And if we've already received that wonderful gift into our lives, let's remember that God wants us to share it and give it to others. Jesus came to bring light, light for all of our lives and light for the whole world. He calls us to share his light and his love with others. The gift of Jesus from the loving heart of God to every single one of us is the amazing gift which we will be celebrating on Christmas Day. So over these days of Advent, as we get busy preparing our lists and doing our shopping and wrapping our presents, let's make sure to remember that God offers us the greatest gift we could ever receive, Jesus. And let's receive this gift with open hearts and share it with the world. And uh, hopefully in the new year, we'll be able to welcome them uh, here to Dundonald uh, in person. So we come to our closing uh, hymn as we sing together, O little town of Bethlehem, we stand and sing.
together the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.